Hi guys, so Boris Johnson's government wants to remove the universal credit uplift that has been helping so many people keep their head above water over the last year. It looks likely that it will go and those who are struggling at the moment will be pushed deeper into poverty. This of course will no doubt result in higher use of food banks and other charities. So what has been the response to this? Well, organizations that help those who are suffering at the moment have asked the government to do a U-turn here and keep the uplift. However, some charities have changed tack. They are using the Tories' own promises against them. Here is a good example of this. Fran Darlington Pollock from the Equality Trust threw Boris Johnson's own slogans right back at him. The key statement from the government, isn't it? So what's your response to that? That suggests that we need to do it when we're coming out of the crisis. We are still in extraordinarily turbulent times, and this comes after a decade of freezes, of budget cuts, of cuts to public services that have already made people on incredibly uneven footing. It would directly contradict the political agenda to level up, the government agenda to level up, to remove the lifeline whilst we are still in this crisis. But more than that, to not make it permanent completely undermines the wider agenda to build back better. We're not going to build back better if we don't have a social security system that actually supports people. This is the biggest overnight cut we have seen to the basic rate of social security since the birth of a welfare state in Britain, something that many people admire. So we should not be getting rid of it, particularly if we have these agendas to level up and build that better. Fantastic, fantastic. Use these slogans that Boris Johnson won an election on to build back better, to level up. He convinced people who are on universal credit don't worry, the Tories are going to look out for you. Don't worry, the Tories will build back better. You know, we're coming out of this pandemic. We're going to build the economy back better. Remember to support us because we're on your side. In reality, they're not. They don't give a crap about the poor, or the working class or, the, or those on universal credit, but they know that the slogans work. And of course, leveling up, well, an uplift of £20 a week is helping so many people taking it away runs completely in the opposite direction of leveling up. So it's, I think it's fantastic to use these slogans that Boris Johnson and his party used to win elections, by elections or whatever against them. Throw it back in their face. Six Conservative former work and pension secretaries oppose the removal of this £20 and, and haven't managed to persuade the PM. Do you think this letter can? So what she's talking about here is people, even Ian, including Ian Duncan Smith, are against cutting this universal credit uplift. You know, Ian Duncan Smith, I have no time for him, but even he is against cutting this universal credit uplift. Unfortunately, it's not enough to stop Boris Johnson and the Chancellor from uh, removing the uplift, I'm afraid. I think this letter should, and I think that people watching this should think really carefully about what they want their MPs to do. The MPs represent us, and it is this country that is being pushed into further poverty, widening inequality. Inequality is not inevitable. This is a policy choice, and the policies are made by the people who represent us. They should listen to people and listen to the people who are suffering the most, both in the times of the pandemic, before that, in a very turbulent time. It should persuade them. You referenced the birth of the welfare state in your previous answer. If, if this £20 a week is removed, what does that say to you about the concept of social security in, in 2021? The problem with social security is we're still modelling it on a system that was built for a population that doesn't exist anymore. We do need to radically rethink what we do and how we support people, but removing urgently needed funds from the people who need it most is not the thing to do. We have this kind of contract, this, this position we're in with the government, when we vote them in, when we secure them, when we're paying our taxes for them, they need to support the population. That safety net has to be there and they shouldn't be weakening it at a time like now. I agree 100% and fantastic. Use Boris Johnson's slogans against him. Now, she also talked about how the there's a contract or there's an agreement between voters and the government, voters and political parties, that we the people vote in our politicians and we expect them to look after us. What is the point in, in having a government if charities and food banks have to pick up the slack? What is the point in paying taxes if those taxes don't go to support society? You know, I, I've talked about this before. 
what is the point in having a government if people have to go to a food bank in order to get enough to eat? Makes absolutely no sense to me. We're supposed to have a social safety net. We're supposed to have means, mechanisms in place to protect people during difficult times. Now, she raised also a valid point about how the social security system that was set up in the past is no longer fit for purpose. In the past, people would have a job, a pretty permanent job. Uh, if they lost their job, they would go on to welfare and then that would be sufficient in order to get back into, in, into employment. Unfortunately, we're seeing something completely different today. We're seeing people working, but not earning enough to live. So they have to work, also rely on something like universal credit, and also go to food banks. This is completely unacceptable. It demonstrates how the welfare system is not working. It's not fit for purpose. Let me know in the comment section, guys, what you think about all of this. As always, your comments are greatly appreciated. Thanks a lot. I want to say a big, big thank you to all of my patrons. You ensure that this channel continues to exist. I'm eternally grateful for all of your support. If you join Patreon, you will receive instant access to our Discord server, where we have both audio and video chats. You can chat with me and other patrons, where we discuss important and non-important issues. Becoming a patron per month costs about the same as a large coffee, so why not check it out?